Um, so we're going to start with the presentation right now. Indeed, like Cedric said, there are some people from, uh, from Luxembourg, some French people. Uh, so I'm going to do the, the, the talking in English. Thanks, Cedric, to remind me. And there you go. No problem. You guys see the screen? Up. Share screen. Tuck. There we go. Good? Okay, so um, we're going to talk about uh, training uh, with Kaiser. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to let you know who I am. So my name is Santos Peter. Um, I've been already 20 years into basketball. Um, so yeah, I'm not like in, into uh, athleticism or soccer or uh, other sports. No, I've been focusing since 99 in uh, with basketball players um, so I graduated in 99 I studied in Brussels and from I uh, let me say day one I started to work with basketball players I never played basketball by myself um, just uh, you see the pictures of all the teams that I've been working with uh, at this moment I'm working for uh, Phoenix Brussels and, and also for the national team of the, of the of basketball I'm a physio um, I did also osteopathy um, and I did like the, my physical education with EXOS. So I went to the States to follow the, the classes, uh, XPS and uh, phase one, two and three uh, on site. So I went over there to, uh, to follow the, the education over there. So that's a little bit about me. Um, so I'm using everything like a mix. I, I like to combine manual therapy with uh, a lot of exercises. And at the other side also I do I just also the focus on on all this physical coaching. So in the off season, in the off season of the basketball, I will do a lot of individual and small group training uh, with, uh, with basketball players who wants to work on their uh, weaknesses on to getting better, stronger, faster, uh, etc. Okay, uh, how do I use uh, the, the Kaiser? Um, that's maybe for the next slide, but this one, um, you can ask me the question why uh, you want to use with, with Kaiser. Um, I'm going to tell you one thing, um, if you go to the uh, regular fitness center, uh, the most of the things that we do is like use bars, uh, use dumbbells, and most of the people use them in one direction, uh, meaning um, just curls, only squats, some deadlifts, um, and I don't say that we don't need that, of course we need it, because that's also the basics. But the thing is also in sports, nothing is slow. Everything is fast. Uh, if you have to accelerate, you have to go fast. If you want to have a reaction, you, have a, you need a high rate of uh, force development. So a lot of, uh, of these movements are fast. You need speed. And not only in one direction, but it needs to be in multi-direction. It has to be from left to right. You make a rotation, sideways, accelerate. So nothing is like linear. Okay, you go linear, but at the moment, you have to cut left. We have to cut right. So that's why I have like at this moment also um, a functional trainer because with this machine you can do a lot of uh, movements not uh, in, in one direction. So that's what you see in this on, on this screen. Uh, speed will change. Uh, speed is a key uh, in sports and in VWAP also. Okay. Um, how do I use the Kaiser uh, by myself? So. Yeah, I, I, I use it for everything. Right? Like you see, I put in the first one prevention, but maybe prevention should be at, at, at the end. Uh, because for me, in one way, also performance strength is prevention. Right? If you make somebody stronger, you will prevent him uh, for injuries. Um, if you learn somebody to decelerate, yeah, is that strength? For me, it is strength, but at the same time, it's prevention. So it's like all a blend. Uh, it's a blend of, of, of everything. So I use it for prevention. I use it for a lot of, I use it a lot of for core exercises because you have a lot of rotational uh, forces that you use with the functional trainer over here. So uh, for the core to resist, um, exist, to resist the strength of the, of the machine, to generate, uh, meaning uh, make the rotation by yourself or to transfer, meaning transfer, I call that the kinetic linking, is to transfer the forces from uh, the feet through, through the hips, to the core, uh, through the arms, the shoulder, and then into 
and implement maybe a, a, a tennis racket or a ball, uh, you can name it. I use it daily in my rehab sessions. Um, yeah, you call it ankle, uh, for an ankle uh, sprain, for a knee, uh, ACL, for shoulder rehab, somebody with low back problems, uh, you name it and it's gonna be in there. Um, I use it for strength, okay, strength also combination with rehab, and then the full sp uh, spectrum, meaning from uh, uh, hypertrophy, uh, strength endurance, stability, power, maximal strength. So whatever you need, you can do with this, with this machine. For performance, the same thing. Try to learn to decelerate, try to uh, learn to uh, accelerate, uh, use it as in cutting movements. Um, and at the end also, I use it as a feedback tool. Uh, I will show you later on, uh, uh, when, when I show you the screen of the machine, uh, I will tell you how I use it as a, as a feedback tool also. Um, oh, benefits. Benefits of the Kaiser, yeah, that's a, that's a whole list. Yeah, there's a, a list of, of all benefits. So I'll, I'll show you here some benefits. I'm gonna go uh, quickly through it because uh, yeah, you can of course also read it. Um, so okay, concentric, eccentric, isometric loading, you know that. Um, of course, uh, you can, uh, while, while somebody is working, you can uh, adapt also the weight. So meaning you can, when he's like in a certain movement, you can hire the resistance, so like that you can hire the eccentric load and then deload again for the concentric, because we all know that uh, eccentric, uh, you all always uh, stronger than, than, than concentric. What we say here, extended acceleration phase. Um, you, you can say, huh? what, what do you mean with extended acceleration phase? That meaning when I do a chest press, for example, I just give you a, a simple uh, example. When I do a chest press with the a, with a, with a, with a, with a Kaiser, then you will have the resistance until the end of the movement. Yeah? It's got something to do uh, with momentum um, of, 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 of weights. Because if you do like maybe a, a bench press, yeah, you will see that only, I think it's already 50 or 60% of the movement. No, I think only 50 or 60% of the movement is concentric because at a certain point you have to decelerate the bar. Yeah? Because otherwise you're gonna throw the bar, the bar away. Okay, so you will see an extended acceleration phase, yeah, and you will see at the other, on the other side, you will see a diminished deceleration of the antagonist, yeah, meaning if I do a chest press again, of course, you have your triceps to push, but on the other side, you have, you have your, your back and your biceps to decelerate the movement. So you will see that acceleration phase will be bigger and the deceleration phase will be, will be smaller. So like that, you can target more the muscle and the movement that you want to achieve. Um, you will also see that the resistance stays the same in every movement. Doesn't mean, uh, doesn't depend on which speed or which angle you're working in. The resistance, if you put 10 kilos, it will be 10 kilos at all movements. Okay, that's something uh, very, uh, very um, important. We will come uh, to this later in the presentation. You will have like a feedback machine. So meaning you have the screen that will give you some feedback. I will tell you later also. You have also in the, in the identification of the fatigue based on the, the percentage of the maximum power. Meaning, um, if you wanna work really on power, we have to make sure that we always stay above 90% of our best repetition. If we see that we're dropping, yeah, uh, in percentage of the, the, the in, in reps, if we drop in percentage of, uh, of our maximum power, meaning that, that means that we're not working on maximum power. So that means we have to, deload the machine a little bit to keep working in that, um, in that zone of maximal power. So that's the, second, the next point. Okay, other thing. Okay, we have a lot of pieces uh, that we can use. Uh, we have the cook bar, we have the handles, we have ropes, we have a vest, we have uh, uh, a band for the waist. So we have a lot of uh, kind of equipments to, to attack the full body. Um, we have a lot of training uh, variability. And like I already uh, told you, we can adjust the resistance during an exercise. Imagine that you want to have like, uh, uh, you're at the end of your workout and you want to do a little hypertrophy and you want to uh, wear the muscle out. So you want to uh, really get that muscle blown up for some hypertrophy. Then you can ask the, the guy to do chest press. And while he's doing, yeah, uh, you, you will see at one certain moment, oof, he cannot go anymore. Okay, at that moment, you can unload a little bit, so you can go again, you can keep on going. So like stripping, yeah, stripping weights, 
Same thing with the guys, you can strip all the time. Uh, next slide. Other benefits, you will see, uh, you can start at low resistance, you can adjust uh, the resistance with just like a 1 point, uh, no, 0 point, uh, 1, uh, uh, well, with 100, 100 grams, I'm sorry, uh, you can adapt during workout. What also is very important with these machines, because there's no peak forces, you can work pretty safe with everybody. You can work uh, with people who have got injuries, you, got, you can work with uh, elderly people, with children, uh, with people who don't have experience in strength and conditioning. Why? Because you can adapt the weights, there's no peak forces, and it's easy to use. So you got a lot, a lot of different uh, connections for the trunk, for the hands, for the ankles. And another benefit, okay, we can use it for kinetic linking. So there are a lot of, uh, a lot of benefits uh, in, in the machine. I wanna talk a little bit about, about the science of it. Um, so if you see here, uh, um, it is the goal of this machine is of course to work on power. We use a, this machine a lot on just like uh, movements. Uh, movement is good, but we're gonna, most of the time we're gonna use this machine slow. But the goal is of the Kaiser, you use it slow, but at the end also we're going to try to work on our power, on fast, on speed, okay? So that's why I, I put the curve, we have the curve uh, force and velocity on the, on the left side, force velocity curve, meaning uh, maximum strength, you will see for maximum strength you need a lot of force, yeah? But the velocity, meaning the speed, will be very low, yeah? If you go all the way to the left, it would be isometric, okay? We cannot move, we cannot drop the weight, yeah, it's, that's the max that we have. So left side, a lot of force and not a lot of uh, speed. If we're dropping by to the right side, we will see uh, strength speed, we will see in the middle power, we will see speed, strength, and then we have speed. On the speed, you will see that the force that you generate is pretty low, yeah, but the speed is super high, okay? So we call this the force uh, velocity curve. Just some, some, some definitions. For me, power is work done over a certain time period, yeah? Uh, but okay, uh, work is uh, the force that you do over a certain distance, okay? So at the end, uh, power is the force, yeah? is the work that you do uh, for a certain uh, distance over a, 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 a time of period. I can push uh, a car uh, for five meters, that would be my work. I'm pushing the car for five meters and the car is maybe, let me see, let me say a uh, thousand kilos, so I'm pushing it. Yeah? But then my goal is now, you don't just push it, try to push it as fast as possible uh, for 10 meters. And then I'm gonna, uh, and then I'm gonna uh, measure my power. This is my power. I pushed uh, one, 1,000 kilos for five meters in 10 seconds. And then I got my power. Okay. Peter, een kleine, kleine opmerking, sorry dat ik je stoor. Ja. Uh, er zijn nog enkele mensen die willen aansluiten aan de sessie. Ja. Uh, kan jij nog eens kijken wat dat... Uh... Ja, kan je zien dat ik daar, dat ik daar kan participants heb. Admit all. Let me see. Voilà, ik denk dat dat in orde is nu. Oké, okay, all right. Dank je wel. Goed. Okay. En excuses. Niet erg. Nu ga ik even zien dat ik eruit kan, want ik zie mijn pijltje niet. Zien jullie dat scherm kunnen ook van voor op jullie dingen? Nee. Van participants, dat zien jullie niet. Nee, nee. Ja, want ik zie dat wel eens in het midden van mijn scherm. Ja, uh, ziet goed. Ja, perfect. <laughs> ja, all right. Goed. Uh, volgende screen. Dus heb ik hier opgepast. Ja, watch out. Next screen. Next, uh, uh, yeah, next screen, let me say. We reversed. Yeah. Uh, velocity and force. So you're going to see now on the left side velocity. And at the bottom you see uh, the force. So you will see now in percentages, okay, velocity is uh, pretty high, you're gonna walk on speed, it's at 20% of uh, one RM, and you will see power, peak power, will be between 30 and 70% uh, of our uh, one RM, okay? So you see now, uh, if the speed, what I want to say with this, the speed can be very high and the force can be low, then you're gonna be at, let me say uh, 20%, yeah? But at the other side, if you're gonna have a high force and a low speed, yeah? You will not work also neither in power because power is force uh, multiplied by distance and time. 
so we can adapt time yeah and we can adapt force but uh, for the peak power we have to find like a balance between force and speed so that's why the best power output will be between 30 and 70 percent of one rm okay so don't think you're gonna work power when you can do a let me say a snatch one time yeah it's gonna be more like maximal strength yeah okay so power uh, between 30 and 70 percent of uh, your one rm if you're going too fast with a certain weight your power will drop if you go with a higher weight and the speed is low your power will drop also so you have to find a right balance uh, in, in that so if you want to uh, influence uh, the force velocity curve yeah yeah you have to work on specific uh, zones that you want to attack if you want to attack if you want to work on your force velocity curve and you want to attack especially the top part you have to work more on the top part yeah if you want to work on more speed you have to work on more on the speed part so but the goal is at the end to move the to move the uh, uh, the curve to the right side and up right side some some examples if you want to work on maximum strength you can work maybe with uh, squats and deadlifts if you want to work more on speed you can do more uh, strength speed excuse me you can work more with power cleans but have weight power cleans uh, in between should be uh, i took this uh, this graphic from 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 internet but if you go even a little bit further power should be between strength speed and speed uh, speed strength speed strength we're going to be more like sled sprints and jump squats then we have ballistic exercises like plyometrics and then we have uh, our sprinting exercises so like i told you uh, just before depends on what do we want low uh, low load and high velocity uh, low load high velocity we will work a lot on speed if you have more like a moderate load and moderate uh, velocity we're gonna work especially in the middle if you're gonna work on high load and moderate resistance uh, we're gonna uh, work especially uh, on the other zone so depending on what we want we're gonna attack sp certain speeds combined with a certain level of, uh, of resistance this is a curve of Dan Baker I uh, just wanted to, to uh, he's like a, a, remain, a very important uh, uh, Australian guy from, uh, from Austria. So, and he made a, made a nice uh, curve. On the left side, you see the speed power. On the right side, you see the maximal strength. Maximal strength at the end, you will be, yeah, we'll have like uh, uh, isometric uh, loading. But I think with this, you already have an idea of what is maximal strength, what is speed, what is maximum power. Okay, now you have an idea. Depending on which zone you want to work, uh, you have to adapt your resistance. Um, I'm going to admit again some people who just like uh, came into the session. Uh, just one second. Okay, got him. Good. Um, next slide. So yeah, like a little, a little like a resume. Work is of course, like I already told you, uh, the energy that you need to move a certain thing, to move the car. Power, yeah, is uh, the same kind of force that you need, but over a certain uh, period of time. The goal is to, to try to go as fast as possible. And of course you have speed, and speed you need implementation of all those factors, uh, meaning stability, strength, stamina, uh, coordination so you need them to uh, uh, have like a good outcome good results I'm going to show you a little video of the Kaiser since the dawn of strength training human beings have had to rely on the movement of mass usually in the form of iron weights is the source for the resistance when we move heavier and heavier mass we do get stronger strength is only half the equation the other half is speed. If you're a pro athlete, a weekend warrior, or senior on the golf course, strength and speed at the very core of taking performance to higher levels. This isn't our opinion. This is the law of physics. Take a baseball swing, for example. To make the ball go farther, you must swing faster. Simple. The bat isn't getting any heavier. So only train for strength. Speed is what's needed. Why they call it 
that speed. Strength training at speed. That's true power. And what is power? Power is strength times speed. This is why Kaiser developed the pneumatic variable resistance system to develop real power, not just strength. Here's how it works. We've modified a simple leg extension machine so that the left leg is using traditional iron weights and the right leg uses Kaiser's system. We further modified this machine by adding a force transducer to measure the actual force being applied along with position transducer to measure the flexion of the joint. This allows for an accurate, real-time comparison of these two resistance methods through the entire range of motion. Now, we're going to start out slow. As both legs move through the range of motion, we can see that the force and the flexion are pretty much identical. If you're going to train slow, it's obvious that you don't need geyser. Traditional resistance of moving physical mass is good enough. Now, let's introduce speed into the movement. First, the iron side. When moving at a faster speed, the iron side shock loads the joints, tendons, and ligaments at the onset of the motion because, as we know, it takes a lot more force at the beginning of our movement to get the mass moving. The variability is now working against us. And as this mass gains momentum, that mass ultimately gets lighter. And when we move at this speed, that mass starts to come right off our foot. It's pretty obvious that we are losing much of the workout's effectiveness. Now, let's apply speed to the Kaiser side. Since we aren't dealing with any mass, the laws of physics are no longer a barrier, and therefore, we can maintain the desired variable resistance curve at any speed. So at the initial takeoff point, when our joints and connective tissue is at its most vulnerable, the resistance is lighter. As we continue through this movement, the resistance increases where we need it most, the muscle. It's really that simple. Only Kaiser's system makes true functional training possible. You can't call it functional training if you can't do it at speed. Train slow, be slow. Train fast, be fast. Train heavy and fast, be powerful. Because strong can be stronger. Fast can be faster. Power can be more powerful. Because science is on our side. Kaiser, because good enough isn't. Wow, I have, to, I have to be honest with you, if I see that video, I feel like working out. <laughs> so this is already, that's, 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 this video tells us a lot, okay? I want to just go a little bit back to it. We got inertia, we got momentum. So you saw, uh, you saw this also in the, in, in, in the video. So a weight that is still wants to stay still. A weight that is moving in a certain direction wants to keep on moving in that certain direction until, until there's another force that tells you to stop. I'm going to tell you what inertia is. Uh, you're driving a car, yeah, and, and in one moment you have to stop, you have to brake because the car in front of you uh, yeah, has to stop also. What's happening? You're going to get pushed forwards. So your body weight still wants to go forwards, but of course, you brake yeah, on the, the brake of the, of, the, of the car. So there's an external force that tells you, oh, we're going to stop. That's inertia. Yeah? On the other side, we have momentum. Meaning, uh, like a, on the right side, I explain, uh, if you have a truck who's moving in a certain direction, yeah, uh, he has the speed, he's got the vector, but that truck, yeah, he's got a lot of force, he's got a lot of weight, and he's moving in one direction. As long as there's nothing to hold him, that car is going to keep on moving in that direction. Yeah? And that's the same thing with the weights, with the weight stack, for example. You saw that also in the video. Yeah? If you're going to do a leg extension, for example, it doesn't mean a leg extension, chest press, everything with dumbbells. You know how it goes. If you want to go pretty fast, yeah, at one certain moment, you will feel that the weight is going to come loose because that weight's got a momentum. Yeah? And the momentum is going in one direction. But the bad thing about it, at one certain point, the weight's gonna fall back down because of, uh, of of gravity, of course. And then, of course, you're gonna have like a boom, a massive impact on your joints, on your muscles. And that's why also is that good for for Kaiser, for older people, for people with injuries, 
because they're not going to have that peak momentum. Yeah? They're not going to have that peak force coming at their body without really expecting it. Yeah? So for older people, for young kids, uh, uh, after surgery, Kaiser is, is perfect to use. Okay? So again, uh, they show the leg extension. They showed you the leg extension exercise. And you will see here, I wanted to explain that again. Left side up, you will see speed movement at four seconds concentric and four seconds eccentric. So you will see over the flexion extension period, yeah? You see that strength, the force is at all point the same. The next uh, uh, figure lower, yeah? two seconds concentric, two seconds eccentric, you will already see that uh, in the, in the, when you go from 110 flexion to zero degrees, so zero degrees is the extension, you will see that your muscles need to produce a little bit more force in the beginning to, to let the weight move. Same thing with a, with a car. If you want to push a car, in the beginning it's going to be pretty hard to get that car moving, but once the car is moving, it's easier to push the car. Yeah? If you go now to the right side up, then even more. We're going to ask one second concentric, one second eccentric, and then you're going to start already seeing the difference between the wide stake and the weight stake and, uh, and the Kaiser. Yeah? Kaiser will give you the resistance all the time, the same thing. And with the weight stake, you will see peak forces at the top. And then at one certain point, you will use less energy to let the weight move because the weight has already a speed. And then you have the last one, uh, 0 0.5 seconds concentric and 0 0.5 uh, seconds eccentric. You will see the big difference, okay? With the weight stake, you will produce a lot of force in the beginning. Of the movement but then the, 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 the weights get like a certain speed yeah and it's moving and at the at the top of the extension you almost don't have to do nothing anymore yeah and that's the same the different thing with the Kaiser machine because you have the pneumatic pressure the pressure will be in every movement it's gonna be around the same uh, force and that's that's why we work with Kaiser because with Kaiser you can work at any speed at any angle and you will have always the same kind of, of resistance Okay, practical part. Um, we're gonna go directly uh, into the practical part. So I'm gonna show some. Uh, I'm gonna give a little demo demo of uh, of all uh, of some exercises. With a functional trainer, we can do some core stability exercises. We can do plyos. We can do the strength training, complex training. Uh, we can do running drills uh, like acceleration, decelerations, change of directions. Uh, speed exercises, we can do conditioning with the Kaiser, yeah, okay, you can say whatever you want, but you have the resistance, you can move from left to right, forwards, backwards, uh, we can do conditioning, uh, any rehab for knees, ankles, shoulders, uh, and what also is not unimportant is you can unload also, I would, I'm going to show that, that also directly uh, in a, one of the exercises, how you can unload uh, a person of, uh, with movements. Okay, here, uh, I want to show you the display. If you have uh, a Kaiser at home uh, or in your office, okay, you probably already know. Uh, on the top, you will see the resistance, okay? Um, so you can, depending on which machine you have, you can lower or higher it. You have your repetitions, uh, and then you have the peak power, yeah? So imagine uh, the peak power, my best repetition I did with my chest press today was one, uh, 1,567 uh, power, okay? That was my best, my best repetition, okay? Now I'm continuing uh, working out and I see every repetition that you do, you will see a number disappearing yeah? on the left side, uh, targets or current power. That's the percentage of your peak power. So at this moment in this exercise, yeah, the, the guy or the woman pushed uh, 89% of 1,567 uh, uh, power, okay? And so like that, you will, after, after each uh, repetition, you will see the percent of your peak power. So like that, you know that somebody, yeah, this is the, the, the feedback uh, that you can do. Um, like that, you know at which level your athlete, your patient is working at that moment. Okay, maybe he's getting tired and you will see for sure, you will see that this power or the peak power is dropping to maybe 70% to 60%. Then you have to know 
you're not working on peak power anymore because the peak power, most of the time for peak power, you only can do four to six, like you say, six repetitions. Once you go over six repetitions, your peak power will, will drop and you're not working no more on peak power, but you're gonna work more on, on, on strength. But okay, depends what you want, on strength, on stamina, depending what you want. Okay, uh, that is for the, for, for the display. What I also use it for um, is, um, imagine you wanna do an exercise with right and left. You have somebody who has like, a, let me say, a shoulder injury, yeah, and you wanna uh, test a little bit the power of, uh, let me say, the internal rotation of the shoulder. Okay, you put the resistance on, let me say, on 10, yeah? You do an internal rotation with the right side and you see, okay, his peak power is 200, okay? Let me try to do this one time on the other side, on the shoulder. It's maybe only 60% of the other side. So like that you can use the Kaiser also to make an evaluation between left and right. And also, of course, in time, you can take a paper, uh, your, your file, and you can say, okay, this date he did uh, on 10 kilos, he had peak power uh, so much. And like that, you can see uh, his evolution in time. I hope, I think you understand it. Okay, just some exercise that I, I put in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the presentation, but okay, I just wanted to put some exercise in there. Uh, the left side is a, is a shop, uh, is a lift, a rotational lift going from down to the top. We're gonna do like a, a high pull and then push out on the left side. Yeah, starting down left, going up right. So already here we're doing some, um, some kinetic linking. On the other side, we do kind, we do a shop. Yeah, it's a rotational shop. And we're gonna go from up uh, to down, okay. If you want on the right side, if you want to make it easier or harder, easier would be, I'm going to put my right leg a little bit more outside. If I want to make it more difficult, I will put, put my feet in line with each other. So the right foot is just in front of the left foot. Like that, my, my base of support is a little bit smaller and it's going to be harder for me. Let me see, next slide. Next slide, uh, I do a, a rolling exercise on the left side. I combine again, I combine my legs over here again with my arms so the strength is going from legs to the pelvis to the core into my arm okay you will see you can do the left exercise you can do uh, without using the legs but you will see for sure that your power output is going to be uh, lower uh, than if you do it with the legs and then on the right side uh, just like a rotation push pull combination of pushing and pulling. You can do this exercise again also um, in squat position. You can keep your legs still. Uh, depends on what you, what you want. Next one's in kneel position, like a rotational row, using especially the focus here is on the pelvis, yeah, the, the hip thrust. And at the end, I make the rotation. And then on the right side, again, a kneeled uh, hip thrust combined with a, with a chest press. But okay, that's also something to say. I use a lot of the, 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 the cook bar uh, only on one side. So like that, I have to work on my rotation. Um, I put here in the presentation, maybe Seder is gonna send that maybe to you later or you can have the, the presentation. Uh, that's a, a YouTube channel with all, uh, I think it's 180 exercises uh, uh, made by Paul Lammers, uh, my Dutch colleague. Uh, and he, he, he made a lot of work uh, into that. What else uh, can you do? Um, that's a little bit more commercial. Um, that's what I do in the summer. Uh, with, my, uh, with, my, with, my, with my with my with my with my athletes, yeah, I make like small groups together, like four or five people, and I I, I let them work together um, with the guys. Okay, I don't only use guys; I do a lot of stuff, but I try to make like kind of circles. I make programs so like that um, they can they they can work in group. But if you say okay, I want to use the Kaiser machines for more like uh, 
uh, to get some more money out of my business. Okay, you can maybe make small group training with all the people uh, at noon, at, uh, at, uh, uh, at the mornings when they have the time for that. Uh, we do that also in our, in, in our office over here. Okay, not at this moment, but we have like, we call it the move. Um, so like people with kind of, yeah, older people with like low back problems and stuff. We have like a small group training and we use the Kaiser to do also all this kind of uh, exercises. So you can do it with older people. You can do it with uh, um, athletes, maybe in the winter with bikers or with runners who don't want to go outside, try to uh, make a, a small group session. And uh, Cedric made, made this. So this is a squash box. So in a, a squash box of uh, six on 10 meters, you can maybe put 10, 10 equipments and you can do like a kind of a circuit uh, with, your, with your patients. Okay, um, let's go. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna uh, cut the, the presentation and we're gonna, yeah, I'm gonna give a little demo on, on the machine. Okay, um, let me see. Tuck a tuck, escape. Um, okay. You guys, you guys see me? Or you don't see me? Let me see, video, keynotes. Mm. Tuck a tuck. Cedric? Peter, uw presentatie staat nog gedeeltelijk open. Niet in het volledige scherm, maar in het presentatiescherm. Ja, ik ga even kijken. Een seconde, ik ga even zien. Ik ben, je ziet, ik ben niet de beste daarmee. No share, nee, dat moet ik niet doen. Ik moet die presentatie stopzetten. Ja, graag. Pam, pam, pam. Uh. Die moet dicht. Voilà. Ja, nu is het perfect in orde. Nu is het perfect. Oké. Okay. Ik ga even zien dat mijn computer moet staan. Oké, dit is ook. Dit is. Dit is. Oké, we hebben een computer. We have uh, the Kaiser, so we have to put a little bit, most of the times uh, webinars are just like presentations, talking, so I want to I wanna show some exercises here. Um, Cedric, you see the Kaiser good? They can. Everything is on there? It's a little bit on the other side. Like that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's good. Okay, good. Uh, okay, you can hear me good? Zit ik? Luid en duidelijk, Peter. Alles in orde. Okay. <laughs> yes. Ja, oké. Hé, dit t-shirt is brand new. Cedric uh, sent it to me. He asked me which kind of uh, size we have. And normally I have a large. So I think that the, the champions train with Kaiser are little small t-shirts. Or maybe I'm, I'm big, I don't know. Uh, anyway. Uh, Let's go. Hey, this is a Kaiser machine. Um, first of all, uh, we have the arms. Uh, what is important for the arms? Grab one arm, pull the trigger, and you put it higher or lower. Okay? Make sure you don't put your hands here because then you're going to hurt yourself. Okay? But I guess that's, that, that, that's everybody knows that. So we have a big range of motion in the Kaiser. We can put it high, we can put it low. Okay? Um, you see over here, I made a little rack to put everything. So we have like kind of different kind of, uh, uh, of tools. We have the ropes, we have the ankle to ankle strips, we have uh, a belt, uh, we have a strip again to put over the knee, for example. Uh, we got a double, a double uh, hands to do warming exercise. And maybe some of you also have a kind of a vest, okay? With the vest, we can do also crazy, crazy things. Um, what maybe is also important for the machine is uh, okay. Normally the machine turns off. Yeah, if you want to put it on, you push one button, and you will see the resistance there. Uh, for example, if you do some, if you do some reps, yeah, you will see there's a number of hundred, four reps. I did now four reps. Yeah, uh, 
Uh, if I want to uh, put it on zero again, you push the two buttons together and you have zero. Okay? Uh, and then you can go over again. Maybe one thing we can do also a power test with, with the machine to uh, show you or to show your athlete or your patient what his peak power is. Yeah? Normally, to do that, you have to keep on pushing the buttons until it's written on 6R. Yeah? It's a six repetition test. Okay? Um, the thing is, when I'm all by myself, I cannot do the test because. Excuse me, I see that somebody is asking to join, so I'm going to admit him. Welcome, Stan. Okay, good. So now I have to do six repetitions. Yeah. The first uh, three I have to do with a low weight. So you put uh, the weight pretty low. Yeah. And then you're going to do, it's not going to be possible right now, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to do a fast breath. I'm going to wait for 10 seconds. Yeah. I'm going to go again. A fast breath. I'm going to wait 10 seconds. And again, a fast breath. Okay. So now I have. Low weight with high speed. Yeah. Let me see, like we saw uh, on the curve, yeah, uh, force is low and the speed is high, the force velocity curve. But now I'm going to hide the weight. Yeah. I get 10 kilos. Yeah. Now I'm going to do the same thing as fast as I can. Bam. Extension. You hold for uh, 10 seconds, you rest. Maybe I, I rest, I eat, otherwise, you're going to be more tired. But again, an extension. You're going to rest. Yeah, 10 seconds, and again, next station. There you go. So now I did the test. There's going to be a number that is going to flash over here. So at this moment, it's 8.4. Yeah. So 8.4 at this at this, this moment, the number that I should work on for my peak power. So now I know, next time I'll work with the machine. Okay, I'm going to put the resistance at 8.4. And this should be, yeah, the weight that I have to use for my peak Power, okay? You can do it for, I can do for digital extension, you can do it for bicep curl, you can do it for chest press, you can do it for row, you can do it for rotations, you can do it for every exercise that you want, but you have to make sure because you have to be with two people, somebody who can guide the machine and of course somebody uh, who can, uh, can, can do it. So for that, uh, but okay, if you're a physio or a performance coach, you always with your athlete or with your patient at the machine so you can uh, guide your uh, go your 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 your, your activity. Okay, um, that's it. Uh, first, what I want to show you, I think it's pretty pretty nice. Yeah, is we can unload. Yeah, because we were talking about all the working with older people. Yeah, or in rehab. Okay, I don't have leg press because leg press is pretty expensive. Also, of course. But I don't have a leg press, but leg press would be good. Okay, let's do a push at 60 kilos. Yeah, a guy is weighing uh, 100 kilos, so that means he's going to work uh, on 60 percent of his body weight. Yeah, but we can do that also over here. Yeah, let me show you. This is the cook bar. Yeah, the cook bar from Great Cook. Great Cook, uh, the founder of uh, of FMS functional movement training. Yeah, I love this bar. I love this bar. You should use it a lot. Okay, so according to the bar over here, weight, okay, let me say 100 kilos and I want to unload him for uh, 40 kilos, so I put the weight on, on, uh, on 20 kilos because if I put it on 20 kilos here, it's 20 kilos one arm and 20 kilos on the other arm. Okay, I'm not going to put it that high right now because I don't weigh 100 kilos, but you can easily grab it like this, maybe for certain, for, for, um, uh, security, you can put a chair behind, and from that position, you can ask to squat. Yeah. Make a squat. So at this moment, I'm unloading my body with 20 kilos. Okay, so like that, with all the people who have a problem, or we really have uh, people who are difficult to sit down and stand back up because they don't put, you cannot put that much weight on the foot or the ankle or the knee, you can use the bar to unload. I did it now like this, but of course you can do it also in that position, okay? That's one beautiful thing about this machine, is you can do everything what you want.
want with the machine. Your imagination is not big enough, okay? I have to tell you, I am somebody who used, uh, I, I try to work or I love just to work with basic stuff, okay? I'm not gonna try to do too complex things, yeah? Because um, if you can do your basics very good, I think that's already the most important thing at the, until a certain level, okay? And if you wanna do specific for sports, okay, you don't have to do like, uh, for me, let me say monkey exercise that I don't know what, what to do. Just try to keep it basic and simple and well thought about, okay? Voila. Okay, um, so to all of us one, for upper body, so we can use one of bars here. Yeah, let's go. You can go everything you want, upper body, on the knees, from that position, you can make a row. You don't have a lot pull down, okay? You can do a lot pull down like this. You can grab the bar wider. You can do a lot pull down like that. If you really want, you can do it behind the neck. But I never do it. You can maybe go on your back, and from that position, you can do a row like that. If you want to put the bar uh, lower, so depending on which angles, if you want to work, if you want to have work more on the lower trap, uh, or the upper trap, or the mid trap, yeah, I can put the bar. I can put the bars a little bit lower. Yeah, I'm gonna connect it with each other. Voila. And from that position, I can do my row. Yeah, like I told you before in the exercise, I can do from this position, boom, more up. Yeah, if I do this now, faster, I can do it also like that, boom, boom. So now I see I have already 530 feet power when I do it without my, my legs. I only achieve 80 percent. So meaning. You have to use also the, 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 the machine, not only just like isolated, but try to make it also kinetic. Make a combination of both. What I also told you, I use a bar like this, yeah? But I love to use the bar like this. Why? Because from this position, yeah? The, the weight is coming from one side, yeah? So now, if I want to uh, just pull, I'm going to make a rotation. So at this moment, I have to control my body with a counter uh, rotation to keep this movement pretty nice and light. Okay? This we can do in several positions. Okay, like I already showed you in the videos. Every exercise, if you change your position, you're going to already have like a, a different exercise. You can do it just st stable, standing. We can do it in base position. We can go in split squat position, one side, or maybe the other side. This will be easier than this one, yeah? Because you get less support on the side of the, of the weight, yeah? You can go tall kneeling, or you can go half kneeling, or you can maybe go one leg stance, and from that one leg stance, you kind of go, yeah? This is for the pull, yeah? But you can do the same thing for the push. Yeah? Same thing push, same thing again from squat position, but make a press, yeah? Split squat position, mid position, and so on. Yeah. While we have the bar and with this position, we can make the movements. You see, once I'm starting to do exercise, I can I can continue doing exercises. Okay? But we can make it non-color movement or color movement. For example, all continuous, meaning. We have the machine, non-color movement, chest press would be starting here, non-color movement, so no, uh, no, no eccentric loading from this position, boom, extend. Non-color movement, this position, boom, and extend. Non-color movement, okay? Let's go more into sports, depending of course what kind of sports you want to do, but most sports, it's always a combination of eccentric, yeah? combined with concentric, meaning you will always do a little dip before you go. If I jump from one position, yeah, in sports you're not going to be like this and then jump up. 
maybe in some sports you do, or maybe in wrestling you are in this position and you have to you have to go. Yeah. But like let me say basketball, this position, okay, I will always do this to go up. Always do this. So I'm gonna like the eccentric face, isometric face, and concentric face. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're gonna make it now. Kind of movement from this position, drop and extend. We hold, drop and extend. We hold, drop and extend. That's a, a kind of movement, movement. We can make it also continuous, okay? This position without stopping, push, 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 push. See? So now we have for the press, we have already three different kinds of exercises, yeah? But we can do it in split squat, in base position, half kneeling position. You can do it on one leg. But okay, now this is seven kilos. If you go on one leg, you have to make sure because you will see when I do it on this side, my foot will try to rotate. So you have to find also a little bit the way, uh, which exercise you can do on one leg and which one not. If I want to do this on one leg, for rehab, okay, then put the weight lower, so you just have a little rotation, but not that the bar is pulling you all the way back into one rotation. Same thing, you can do it also on the other foot, but then it's even more difficult because your support will be on the other side, yeah, press. But then, of course, look at this, what's happening, okay? I make a rotation, now, I can do this exercise perfectly for knee, re uh, knee rehab. Why? Because ACL injury is what happens. Knee tucks in. Okay? So now I'm going to do the rotation to the left side. My knee wants to do what? It wants to buckle in. So now I have to contract my glutes to keep the, the knee nicely out. Maybe you can do it in that direction. See? It's pretty hard. Rotate and press. You see what you want to do? It wants to lean sideways. Okay? That's for the bar. Um, of course, you can also put the bar in the neck. Like this is the bar. I mean, you can do a lot of exercises with the bar uh, still. Uh, meaning, like I showed you, like the shops that we did or the lifts, you can use this also uh, for lifts. Let me say, you go in split squat position, already some tension on the man. You can do a rotational lift. Chest up, grab the bar, one up, and press. So now we already in core exercises. Yeah? Same thing again, we can do it stability, like a stability lift. Yeah, we can, we can make a rotation. One side down, look to the machine, and all the way up. Okay? You can go fast, boom, and stabilize. Yeah? Down, up, and fast and stabilize. And stabilize. Okay? So speed. Combined with stability. I told you, you can use a bar also for this. Yeah. And we can put the bar in the neck. Easy, bar in the neck. And we can squat down. Squat down. Maybe with this bar, I'm sorry that you have to see my back. Yeah, of course. Low weight at this moment, it's low weight. Yeah, of course, we can also do it with the bar like this, but yeah, what I feel when you do this, this is what happens. You feel like you pull a little bit back, okay? So I prefer to do it other way around, but you can do this again, squat, make a jump, and stabilize. Over here, same thing, we can make a non counter movement, meaning from this position, jump up, or you can make a counter movement, jump up, or you can make it continuous, boom. Boom, boom. So instead of using a trap bar or dumbbells, because that's the same thing again. You get the trap bar, trap bar. What's happening? I squat down, I jump up, but at a certain moment, you don't have the weight anymore. Look, I'm here, yeah, I'm squatting. And I'm jumping up from this moment already, the bar's got that kind of speed. Yeah? And because of the speed that the bar has, I will not have to push as hard anymore when I'm on my tiptoes. 
That's not what's going on when you use the Kaiser. If you got the, the bar in the neck here, I will show you like this. If you got the bar in the neck, it's now on uh, five kilos. Yeah? So you get the bar in the neck, you squat down, five kilos, five kilos, five kilos, five kilos, five kilos, five kilos, still five kilos on both sides, so 10 kilos. So meaning the resistance or the resistance that you have in your muscles from this point until that point that you leave on the ground is going to be the same. So that means more work for the muscles. And that's what we want. Peter, een kleine opmerking. Uh, we zijn ongeveer een uurtje. Ja, we zijn nu een uur bezig. Oeh, je, we zijn al een uur bezig. Ja, dat je een idee hebt van uh, hoe lang dat we al bezig zijn. Hè? Ja. Oké, okay, voor de mensen. Ik hoop het. Amai, dat is het probleem. Hè. Als ik begin, dan stop ik niet. Hè. Voilà. <laughs> Goed. Zeg, misschien, misschien al als mensen, if, if people want to see something special, already uh, send it to Cedric, so like that he can we'll put it in the chat box, so can, Cedric can ask me, hey Peter, can you show this or that or that, okay? Good? Okay, can you have a man of TV the time ago? Perfect, okay. Cook bar. Cook bar done. So we got the cook bar, we can do other stuff with cook bar also. Let me go. Um, let me go into the into the the. Tell me, yeah. So is that a harness? The waist belt. Belt. The belt. Yeah. Yeah, Cedric. It's the waist belt. Yeah, waist belt. Yeah, belt. Because I'm so many things. Hey, what's important now? Yeah, is that you know. That you know the distance, that's always important for me. That you know the distance of how far this is going to go. Yeah, that you know how far it will go. Yeah? At this moment, this is the max. Yeah? This is the end. So, what I always do is I put like a kind of a, a mark on the floor that I know, okay, that's the first that my patient or my athlete can go. Because it would not be nice that they move in full speed this direction and then bam, he's got a shock. Okay? So I'm using uh, the, the, the belt a lot. What I do, what can I do? I can use the band already for some simple exercises like lateral pushes. Yeah? Okay, that is for. Acceleration, lateral movements, push, push, yeah? You can do the same thing forwards, yeah? That you keep or you learn to, somebody to push forwards or acceleration, for example, example push forwards. Um, you know Frank, Franz Bosch, yeah? The Dutch guy is not really prone to movement with resistance. But I use this especially for like feedback because like this, your patient, your athlete knows how to push in which direction. So it's a feedback, you have to push against the resistance. Yeah, I use it like that. I'm not gonna put this exercise on, uh, on 15 kilos. Yeah, no, most of the time, I do it slowly just as, a, as kind of a resistance. But okay, everybody's got his own philosophy, so use your philosophy. Okay, there are several ways to move, okay? So I do this maybe for like level movement, but I can also do this for deceleration. Because now the machine is pulling me that way, yeah? so I can do it sideways, like this side, this side. Because that's also what happens in sports, yeah? I have to go from one direction to the other, but like sideways, boom, and excel, yeah? So you have to decel to push again to go lateral, okay? And now it's a control movement, yeah? In sports, it's not a control movement. And then the level is gonna go up, so this is gonna be pretty fine. You can do it like this, but you can also do it like forwards. Meaning, I can go like forward lunge, boom, come back, forward lunge, come back. Maybe I have a ball. Is it in the kilo? Three kilo, yeah. I have a ball with the same thing. Lunge, decelerate, 
Spread the ball and back up. Spread the ball in one direction or maybe in another direction. Yeah. Good, so like that. Have, I'm working on deceleration and control of the rotation. Okay. We will talk about conditioning. Okay, we can use this easily. Accelerate forwards and backwards. Forwards and backwards. You can do metabolic exercises. You can do conditioning, meaning 30 seconds rest, 30 seconds work. Or let me say 15, 20 minutes. Combine with other exercises. And like that, you can do uh, some conditioning exercises. Okay? The ways that I can also use for lateral skips, meaning I do lateral skips and then balance out. Okay? Again, for rehab, for coordination, for stability, because what's going to happen? I'm going to stabilize over here, and my body is going to be pulled in that direction. For example, ACL, yeah, ACL injuries. The most important thing with ACL is, of course, the lateral flexion of the core. The body is leaning sideways. If the body is leaning sideways, the knee will bump it, and you will have a tear. So my goal is here to make a good soft landing, get low, and make sure that the, the center of gravity is above the foot and you go in sideways, okay? Okay, still a bunch of exercises possible with, uh, with the belt. If you want to work on the lateral flexion, yeah, of course, you can put on the vest and you can make the connection on the shoulder or in the back, more on the top. So like that, the momentum is even higher and you're going to be pulled back even more in that uh, direction. Okay? Um, well, that's what I use. We have this band also. Yeah, I will use that a lot also for my, for my knee rehab. Yeah, knee, I put it through like that. Just an example, put it here. So now at this moment, it is not for uh, strength, but it's more for stability. I'm going to, for example, going to make a back lunge. Yeah, my knee is going to be pulled in. I keep stability, I'm gonna come up. I have to make like a, a hip hinge, get over, touch the floor, keep the stability in the hips, come back, yeah, and make it back once again. Yeah, over and drop back down. So like that, we can use this also as a feedback tool uh, for the stability and for the knee, uh, for the knee stability coming from out of the hips. If you want to use it for, let me say, hamstrings, for your strength, for quads, what I also do is I take a chair, like a, a box, like grab one. Maybe I'll do maybe more, more uh, analytic. Yeah. I'm going to put it down, put this around. Very simple for knee rehab, knee take it side, sit down, and from that position, take the flexion and go again. Flexion and go again. So like that you can work on speed. You can do the same thing for the leg extension, sit down on the other side and make the leg extension. But of course, we have to know, be aware of this limitation, because when I do a leg extension, if I sit down, there will be a lot of force over here, or a lot of like uh, resistance. But once you're here, the resistance will be lower because the angle over there is not the best anymore. Okay? So just to do like uh, for leg extensions, uh, you have to know that of course the momentum uh, is going to be a little bit different. Okay. Good. Um, okay, this, this is a, a basic presentation. Um, I showed you some exercises. For sure, not all the exercises that I wanted to show, but I think you have to be creative in doing your, uh, your exercises. I think the main message of this, of this, of this uh, session uh, would be that you can use the machine with every speed, in every angle. You have a lot of possibilities. You can adapt the weight during your workout. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna show that because probably you know. Now I'm gonna show. Meaning. I'm going to do a research curl. Example, okay? I got 10 kilos, I'm moving. After 10 times, ooh, I cannot go anymore, okay? I'm diminished while I'm working, up, up, and I can keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. Up, and you lower, keep on going, keep on going. And like that, like, you're going to 
blow up the, the muscle. So, um, also for older people, um, there's no peak force, meaning uh, there's no weight that's gonna drop down and that you have an uncontrolled movement. So the resistance will be always the same, no peak forces. Uh, I think that's the main, the, main, the, main, the main thing, that this machine is not only to use just to, um, just to do a movement against resistance, the goal of this machine is to do movement against resistance with high speed. That's the goal of this exercise. With high speed, without having any uh, peak forces uh, of weights that are coming down and dropping. Because inertia, momentum, is not affected with this pneumatic machine. Are there any questions? You can put in the chat box. Is there something else that somebody wants to see? Let me see chats. Uh, <laughs> okay, good. Nothing, uh, no questions. Um, okay. Cedric, you have something to add. You want, you want me to show something else in this first uh, session? Um, Peter, uh, I think it was a very nice uh, presentation also of the exercises. So that was a really uh, nice interpretation. I think this is a first, uh, a very good first webinar, uh, but it's also good uh, for people to know that there are like um, in company training. So if they want to brainstorm with you specifically in their practice, it's also possible. Now it's a little bit difficult with COVID, but normally it's also possible to organize like a session with you um, in a physio practice itself or with a, with a personal trainer to brainstorm over uh, exercises or uh, getting to know more about the Kaiser. So it's also uh, uh, reaching out to all people over here. Okay, good. Then uh, I think we're gonna end this session. I did 50 minutes longer. We started a little bit later, but okay, I could still continue, but okay, we set it Saturday from 10 to 11. Um, I want to thank everybody to make uh, time off to check this, this webinar. I hope you have something out of it, maybe an exercise to exercise, maybe you know a little bit more what you can do now with your Kaiser machine. Go and check out the link in B, uh, the link that I gave also in the presentation, maybe, uh, I don't know, that Cedric can send that to you. Um, um, so like that you can check out all the exercises from Paul Lammers. And yeah, thank you. Hopefully we see each other uh, a second time and we can, go, we can go deeper into maybe something more specific about core or rehab or ACL with, uh, with the Kaiser or whatever. Shoot, shoot your, uh, all your ideas to Cedric and then I will hear it and then, uh, yeah, we can keep up uh, the good work. Okay. Nice. Yeah, guys, if you have any requests on a, a next webinar, please let us know. Um, we'll be happy to organize a, a next webinar with uh, Peter. Very, very well done, uh, Peter. Congratulations. Thank you. See Bye. you. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.